Hello and welcome to the War on Morons. I'm your host, Anissa Ritchie, and here are this week's top morons. With Halloween just around the corner, let's get things started off with a bit of a spoopy news item. In fact, scratch that. This one is downright disturbing. Have you heard of McKamey Manor? It's gaining a ton of notoriety lately for being the most extreme haunted house ever conceived. Despite a waiting list of over 25,000 people hoping for a chance to win the $20,000 prize for completing the haunt, no one has ever made it through McKamey Manor in its entirety. If you're lucky enough to be selected for a visit to McKamey, you're subjected to a social media screening, must pass a physical, and of course, have to sign off on a 40-page waiver and provide a safe word. The safe word comes in handy since a visit to this haunted house is likely to leave you scarred for life. You'll be abducted and likely to be force fed vomit and other bodily fluids. You'll be physically and psychologically assaulted. You'll be confined with tarantulas, cockroaches, and creepy crawlies of every variety. You'll even face the possibility of cuts, bruises, broken bones, and extreme torture. But that's all covered in the waiver, so you've really got to be a moron to sign up for it, right? Cue the McKamey haters. That's right, there's a growing list of idiots who willingly sign up for this torture, only to turn around and complain that they were tortured. Go figure. One of the willing participants who is now speaking out against McKamey Manor is Amy Milligan, who claims her experience was so extreme that she felt she was going to die. Milligan claims she expected an unpleasant and scary tour, but not the extremities of what she was actually subjected to. If you want my advice, you can avoid this type of shock by simply reading the waiver or watching the many videos McKamey Manor posts on YouTube. It should be surprising to absolutely no one how horrifying of an experience this actually is. In a normal world, if it were discovered that a member of Congress had multiple extramarital affairs with younger staffers, the media would be unanimously calling for their removal from office, especially if the news came complete with multiple photos of the politician in the nude and using drugs. Luckily for Democratic Congresswoman Katie Hill, we no longer live in a normal world. Hill, who shockingly hails from California, was recently found to be involved in a bizarre three-way relationship with her husband and a 24-year-old female aide. But apparently, that wasn't enough for the esteemed Congresswoman. She was also in a three-way relationship in 2010 and is accused by her now estranged husband of cheating on him and their um, junior wife or captive or whatever with her campaign finance director. On top of all this, the professional and discreet congresswoman was in the habit of posting nude photos of herself with her lovers and even her pets online in a wonderful thread called, Would You F*** My Wife? But besides the Daily Mail, which broke the news, most mainstream outlets are scrambling to justify Hill's apparently completely normal and non-scandalous lifestyle. Get a load of these headlines. From Huffington Post. Katie Hill is not accused of committing a crime, but she may be a victim of one. From The Guardian, revenge porn is being used to smear and discredit a sitting congresswoman. From Refinery29, Representative Katie Hill was allegedly in a thruple, just like many millennials and Gen Z. So I guess the message is that she's a strong, independent, bisexual woman and a rising millennial political star, and maybe we should all aspire to be so free and open with our desires. Never mind the fact that she's engaging in sexual relationships with her younger employees. Congress, where the laws are made up and the ethics don't matter. What's the first rule of drug trafficking? According to my extensive research, also known as watching TV, it's that you don't get high on your own supply. I'm not sure what the second rule is, but maybe it's that if you must get high, you don't get high on federal government property looking for cartoon characters. No, this isn't another Pokemon Go story. This is the story about California drug dealer Manuel Paz Sanchez Jr.'s ill-fated detour to Yellowstone National Park on his way home from North Dakota. During a traffic stop, Sanchez told Montana Highway Patrolman that he'd just come from the famous park and that he'd seen Yogi Bear. Unsurprisingly, this led to a drug search. 
The eight pounds of methamphetamine subsequently found in his trunk made it crystal clear that the yogi sighting was just a drug-induced hallucination. Shocking, I know. My biggest takeaway from the story is this. Yogi Bear? Really? The bear who hangs out in the woods and raids picnic baskets all day? You'd think he'd appeal more to the potheads. This guy, I think he'd be more of a speedy Gonzalez fan because of the meth. Get it? Speedy? Okay, moving on then. While we're busy waging the war on morons, apparently the morons are waging a war on ice cream. First, it was the disease-ridden teenagers pulling pints from grocery store shelves, having a big lick, and putting them right back in the freezer. All for the gram. But this is just disgusting. A 66-year-old woman named Jung Wipcha is being accused by Lulu's Ice Cream in Indian Shores, Florida, of ruining over $2,000 worth of treats and equipment by sticking her finger in her nose and then the ice cream and even spitting and urinating in it. Wipcha runs a convenience store which shares a building and, unfortunately for anyone in Indian Shores who's had a hankering for a waffle cone on the way to the beach, a bathroom with Lulu's. According to the Pinellas County Sheriff's Department, she was caught on camera repeatedly using this bathroom with the door wide open and tampering with the ice cream and equipment located nearby. Apparently, Wipcha, a Korean immigrant, has no known mental health or substance abuse issues, and these actions stemmed from jealousy over the neighboring business's success. And in case you are wondering, no, she did not tamper with their coke. And our final story of the day is one that, well, I'm not really sure what to make of this one. Is it moronic? Is it ridiculous? Or is it just a bit of innocent fun and actually a pretty cool idea? I'm no theological scholar or expert on the occult, so I'm bringing on today's special guest. Joining me live from the Ebenezer Baptist Church in Clarksdale, Mississippi, is Reverend Jeremiah Jackson. Good morning, Reverend. How are things with you? I'm blessed by God. Praise Jesus. I understand you have some strong opinions on this topic, but before we get into it, I want to bring our audience up to speed. So a tattoo artist named Rick Shrek has been in the news lately for constructing the world's largest Ouija board. Dubbed Ouija Zilla by tourists and critics alike, the gigantic structure is a painstakingly crafted replication of the popular Parker Brothers game. It weighs an astounding four and a half tons and stretches over 3,000 square feet. The board features a full alphabet, numbers zero through nine, the words yes, no, and goodbye, and a 400 pound planchette, which is used to facilitate communication with the dead. Do you say the man, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now I knew about the giant squeegee boy, but did you just say the man named Shrek? Yes. The board was built by Rick Shrek. Shrek, like the damn monster. Shrek like the... I'd say it's a fair bet that it's a coincidence. The big green goblin. You know, with the big fat ass. Shrek. Look, I don't care. I need to see a picture of Shrek. I want to see what Shrek looks like. I want to see what the big green goblin with the big fat ass looks like. I'll see what we can do. Anyway, moving along, one interesting point is that the board took Mr. Shrek an entire year to construct. Well, but look, that damn goblin's gonna have all the time in the world because his big, fat, green, greasy ass is gonna burn for all eternity in the everlasting lake of fire. Oh, praise Jesus. Whew. Lord Jesus willing. Lord Jesus willing, his big fat ass gonna crisp up like a hog that walked and wrote this every chicken when he's cast straight to hell. Woo! Satan himself is gonna be turning that spit. Woo! Burn that ass. That's quite a statement. Do not turn to mediums or seek out spiritists, for you will be defiled by them. I 
and the Lord, your God. Do you know what that means? I don't. Of course you don't know what that means. It's in the Bible. Leviticus 19.31. Now do you know what it means, Anita? It's Anissa. Well, that means the Lord, your God, will drag you straight to hell. Every last one of you goddamn greasy, demon-licking sinners who feed this godless delusions are all going to meet the same fate. You're going to get burned to a crisp. Your ass is going to burn. It's going to crisp up like a crispy, crispy rotisserie chicken turning on the everlasting spit straight in hell because God, God, the Lord God. Ooh, he makes the hottest flame the Lord can make. And he's going to burn your ass. Okay, well, Shrek has said he wants to use the board to summon the world's largest spirits to Salem. What do you think about that? Salem! Salem! Huh? Salem, Oregon? Well, that explains it all. That explains it all. Because only them filthy, dirty, hairy-assed, organ hippies would do this kind of dumb shit. Ooh, I'm going to be real with you. I'm going to be straight with you. I'm going to tell it to you like it is. The entire west coast of this country is nothing but a steaming pit of filth and sin and depravity. And I hope and pray, I hope and pray that Jesus Christ above, Jesus himself, he's going to make Leviathan rise up from the Pacific Ocean. And he's going to take a flaming shit. He's going to take a shit upon the goblin track. He's going to take a shit on the goblin track. He's gonna take a shit on the squeegee board. He's gonna take a shit on you. He's gonna take a shit on your family, your friends, everybody in there. Oh, all your hippies in Oregon. Oh, praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Oh, oh, you getting me worked up now. You getting me worked up. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, Reverend, but the, um, Ouija board is pretty far from the Pacific. It's in Salem, Massachusetts, not Oregon. Massachusetts? That's the one. Oh, hell no. Salem, Massachusetts. Oh, that's even worse. Ooh, you can laugh at me. You can laugh at me at home. You can laugh at me wherever the hell you are. But you wouldn't be laughing if you knew what I know. But you can't know that because you're a woman. You're a woman. You're a member of the evil sex that created sin. You're a member of the evil sex that got mankind cast out of paradise. It's in the Bible. You would not understand because you're a damn woman. Excuse me? You shut your mouth, Anita. I ain't speaking to you. No, I'm speaking to every man, every God-fearing man out there in TV land watching my face. You need to look here. You need to understand the time has come. We got to go into the streets. We got to find the cats. We got to seek out the black cats. We got to follow them. We got to follow them to the hiding holes. We got to find the women. We got to find the women. We got to find the witches. We got to drag them into the streets. We got to burn the witches in the goddamn streets. For Jesus Christ. Reverend, are you seriously advocating witch burning? <sighs> Praise Jesus. Shut up, witch! Shut up, witch! I can see through your lies! I can see through your deception! I am the Lord God! I am Jesus Christ! And I say, burn the witch! Burn this witch! Find her home! Drag her from her home! Burn her in the streets! Or else the demon Shrek is gonna win! The demon Shrek is gonna end the world! You gotta burn this goddamn- Okay, that's about enough of that. I'll let you in the audience judge who the moron is in that story. Anyway, that's about all the content we have for today. So have a happy Halloween. I'm still here, witch. You can't get rid of me. Jesus Christ, would you stop that? I am Jesus. Fuck you. Okay, that's all. Show's over. See you next week. No, you won't. You'll be in hell. You're all going to hell.